do for my sister, now she's no more, is to take all I do. She seems to... I seem to be the only thing she has. Beatrice, <laughs> I think I am, I am going to stop you right there. I will stop you there and remind you that this old lady you are talking about is my late brother's daughter. But that singular introduction alone, you need to know that she is my daughter. Her father died three years ago, and now she has lost the mother. And that is why I am here. Be your mind careful, Anna. I need to take her to the city to take care of her. She, she needs to be loved. You know, I will take care of all her needs. Do you have a problem with that? No, I know. I don't have a problem with that. But I have a problem when you stand before me to say that you are the only one she has. That's a very wrong thing to say. Since her mother died, she has been living in this town and she has been living good. No, she has not been living good. She has been living all alone in her father's house. It's misery now. She's a young girl. She needs to be taken care of. I need to get her out of that misery. Get her to school. You know, just take good care of her. If I take her to the city, I will take care of all her needs. I will ensure she gets into the university. I mean, what else would you want for her? Fantastic. This is what you should have said from the onset. You know, on this particular assurance now that you will have, you will take her to the city and allow her to continue with her university education, you have beaten me to it. You know, listen, this was exactly her father's dream for her. My brother wanted the daughter to study law and become a lawyer, not just a lawyer, to become a very big lawyer in this country. And now I can see that dream materializing, not just for her, but for the family. Yes. <laughs> and you have my, my permission. You can go and take her. Take her with you, and if you need anything, don't hesitate to come. <laughs> Whatever assistance that I can give, I will always give it. My house is always open. No problem. Thank you so much, Eugene. <laughs> I really appreciate Hi. it. Is it good money? Oh, I'm going to get out of my bed. This is good money. Hey, Deca. Eh? Dad. 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 This is indeed so good. Ah. My brother will be so, so happy wherever he is. And finally, that wonderful dream he has of his daughter is materializing. What is it? No. Doesn't mean you've lost your wand of decisiveness. Or you are just tolerating that woman because she's rich. Because she's rich? How much does she have? I don't, I don't, Agnes, where is this coming from? Oledo has no reason to go and live with her in the city. I had expected you to study your grant. Stand my grant and be doing what? I don't understand what you mean by studying your grant. We didn't hear what the woman said. That she, she's going to assist Toledo to enroll into the university. Possibly she will start to read law and then become a lawyer. That means that dream that my brother had for the daughter that she's going to be a very big lawyer in this country is on the verge of materializing. What kind of ground do you want me to stand again? To stand against it? And what, Paula? And you believed her? Why shouldn't I believe? You just said it to say that the woman is rich. That means she can do what she said. Olama was the only woman married into this family that took me as a co-wife. And she was never in competition with anyone. Her daughter is my daughter as well. I don't know why death will never allow good people to live long. Hey, 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 please, uh, Agnes, can you just hold it? You can you just slow down? Can you just allow me to understand where you're coming from? You know, what, where, is the, where, where, where is this coming from? I know, what are you saying? What are you building up to? What is it? What I'm saying is that I had wanted Oledo to live here with me. Live here with you and be doing what here? Agnes, I know my financial stand. Right now, I cannot pay the school fees for somebody who is in the university. You know that. I want to know you. You don't have money. You cannot do with your money. So why should we encourage Oledo to sit back here with us and be doing nothing? When there is somebody who is willing to take her and help her go into the university. How can you, how can you be saying it like that? Yeah? 
You don't want to move, and you don't want to leave the road for those that want to move? Is that how, how I train you? Listen, wish that girl success. Come out of this your belief. Come out of this, this your, this your, this your backwardness. And every time you, you can never see anything good in, in somebody else. Come out of that chair and wish her success. Leave the rest to God. Beatrice lives in this kind of rich house and she never bothered to invite my mother and I. Hey, Olaju, why are you standing there observing the house like a moron? Huh? I'm just admiring the beautiful house, that's all. Please, I didn't ask for your compliment. Get your bag out of the boot. Immediately. And for information, we don't speak Igbo around here. Hello? Yeah, I am back in town. I'll arrange everything tonight so tomorrow you get them. Okay then. Bye. Yeah. Yes. Who is she? <laughs> Who is she? Vivian. You don't know me again. Oledo. Can we go in peace? I'm literally. <laughs> Only those. You're welcome. Hello, mom, you're welcome. How's your home? Everybody's fine. You're welcome. Your house is very beautiful. <laughs> you. But you won't blame me. You are not looking kept at all. Enough of that. Alright? Enough of it. Mom, I'm sorry. But this is one of the reasons I hate going to the village. Look at how old it is looking. Oh my goodness. Hm. Vivian, can you just allow mom to say what she wants to say? She's the one that called for this meeting and not you. Okay. She's spoken so much already. Are we done? Can I go on? All right. The reason I invited Oledo here, of course you all know Oledo is my late sister's only child. I decided to bring her to the city for a couple of reasons. One of them being that um, we all know that our ex-house help who just got married has left. She's not coming back anymore. So I brought Oledo here as a replacement. In the car while we were coming, I gathered that she could do a lot of things. I mean, it, there's practically anything she does not cook. So she's going to replace our old cook. Hmm. Well, I don't have any problem with that. But first, she will have to go into the bathroom and wash herself over and over again before going into the kitchen to cook anything. Vivian, am I the one you are talking to like this? And in your village brain, you feel this is the same Vivian who used to come to the village. For your information, I am now a graduate of economics, working in my father's company as a financial controller. 
I am a boss. And a village girl like you should pick your words when you address someone like me. All right? Let me show you to the kitchen. Get up, get up, get up. You have to be fast. Let's go. you're doing? Smoking in my house? How many times have I warned you to stop smoking here? Don't you know that smoking leads you to your death? <clears throat> eh? Okay, I've heard. Okay. It's all about you, you, you hearing. Let this be the last time you smoke in my house. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you understand what the... Idiot. Smoking in my house. I decided to bring her to the city for a couple of reasons. One of them being that um, we all know that our ex-house help who just got married has left. She's not coming back anymore. So I brought Oledo here as a replacement. In the car while we were coming, I gathered that she could do a lot of things. I mean, it, there's practically anything she does not go. Is this why she brought me here? To be her house help and cook? She told my uncle, Ichi Omenka Fonaya, that I will enroll into the university. Why then is she seeing me as her perfect replacement for her married house help? Mother, I felt so humiliated. She made it appear as if I am nothing. That is, she's up here and I'm down here. Hmm. Oh, I, I tried to uh, explain myself, but everybody supported her. Mother, I feel so lonely and abandoned, honestly. They all abandoned you. But God did not abandon you. Oh, Mother, you have continued to tell me this. Eh? That I should not castigate or look down on God. Is it not obvious, Mother? God is the one who has finally abandoned us. Why would you say a thing like that, my daughter? Is it not obvious? Yeah, I don't. No, this thing we are living is a life. My father died before I could stand on my feet as a woman. We have been feeding from hand to mouth. Eh? And you are here telling me that. Mother, don't, 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 don't. Yeah, there's nothing you will tell me. It's just simple. God has abandoned us. And I tell you again, no matter what you face in this life, do not castigate God. Did you hear me? God has his own way of doing his things. And he does it in appropriate time. No matter what you face in life, do not castigate God. Do not even complain to mortals because they have nothing to offer. Always look up to God because He will always show that He is God. My mother, the woman of prayer, now I understand. Some toiletries in your bathroom. Does it mean you don't know how to use them? I've been using the toiletries. Then 
Why are you still smelling? Does it mean your body odor is so deep into your blood that the sweet smelling soaps cannot wash it off? Well, I actually want to discuss something with you. In as much as you have changed towards me, but I still see you as my sweet cousin. And as a young woman like me, I know you understand me better. I'm talking about your body odor and you are changing the topic. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Your mother promised my uncle that I will go to school. Well, she has not done that. She's not doing anything about that. Rather, she converted me to a house girl. I do all the chores in this house. Wait a minute. Are you saying you don't want to do her chores? What qualification do you have to choose otherwise? My point exactly. I don't have any qualification. I want to have one. I want to go to school. Please, my dear, help me talk to your mother. Please. Mm. I will when my spirit leads me. But at the meantime, go and wash the clothes my mother left on the floor. Listen, the fabrics are very expensive. So do not use washing machine. Wash them manually. Looking like this. Um, I, I, I washed it, ma. I washed it very clean, ma. You washed this thing. You washed this thing, right? What do you mean you washed it? And it's this dirty. Will you, you get this thing out of here? Sorry. Get out of here. I don't even know when you'll start doing things right. Stupid girl. knocking on the door. Go and find out who it is. Let the person in. Hurry up! You're welcome, man. Thank you. Yes. Who is watching my hearing? Oh, Mine, of course. My friend, my friend. My good oh, friend. Oh my God, you're back. <laughs> yes, I am. Good to see you. Look at you. Look I know, at right? You. I know, uh -huh. I know, uh -huh. I know, uh -huh. I know. Uh -huh. Hey, please sit. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you woo, so much. Woo, woo. Ah, you are being really good. Thank you. You can say that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> interest, interest. Yes. My very good friend. That's me. You can't do without house helps. Oledo. Oledo is my niece. Excuse me? Yeah, she's my niece. Your niece? Mm-hmm. And she's looking so unkempt. Oh, please, 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 please. Don't look that way, Tonya. Eh, just forget it. Is that your problem? Forget it. So, how was your trip to Dubai? Tell me about it. Like I shouldn't talk about the girl? Oh, by the way, how are your children? Um, well, that's, um, Kingsley and Fortunate. How are they doing? You really need to change. Truly. Initially, you never wanted any of your family members to get close to your children. And now this one is here, looking so unkempt. Mrs. Kennedy, I don't like people getting involved in my private life. You're prying and I don't like it. So just stop. All right? I asked after your children, you were not ready to answer, so you, you, you want to know so much about my family. Mm -mm. Excuse me. It's not acceptable. 
Well, it's okay. My children are doing very good. Great. That's mm. good to hear. Oh, by the way, um, your children, Vivian and, um, Melvin. and Melvin, yes. Oh, Vivian stepped out. She'll soon be back. Melvin is back in school. I hope you're keeping an eye on him. I don't like that school at all. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the school. Besides, there, there's no perfect school anywhere. And what did you bring for me from Dubai? I thought you had closed the case. Why are you reopening it? I've forgotten that sometimes my friend can be stubborn. Whatever. Father, I, I don't understand the meaning of this. That is a letter written in English language. My son, a U.S. trained medical doctor cannot claim that he doesn't understand English anymore. Father, that is not what I am talking about. It's just that this letter is officially appointing me the medical director okay. of the hospital. Thank God you understand that. You are now the medical director of the hospital. Uh, why, Father? I mean, how? You are still active in medical practice. You are the medical director. Uh, Father, I just got back four months ago. I'm still trying to cope with the medical practice in Nigeria. And, and, and yet, you're, you're offering me... I, I don't... I, I just... I'm sorry, your breath. Uh, I know you can do it. Hmm? It has nothing to do with age. It has everything to do with zeal to work and commitment to duty. I will be a consultant and I will always come in whenever I'm needed. The entire responsibility of running the hospital is down on you. If you can work with the staff already available, then you retain them. If not, you get them fired and employ new ones for yourself. Congratulations, my son. Thank you, Father. Congratulations, son. Oh, that? Yes, that. I see Father's brief already. Mother, I am still very surprised. I mean, how could he make me the medical director of the hospital? Don't you think I'm too young for that? No, you're not. Well, your father in his wisdom knows you're capable. He told me about it and I supported him. I'm so proud of you, son. Ah, thank you very much, mother. You're the best. Thank you. Well, there's something else I would like us to talk about. Um, okay, yeah, I'm listening. It's something every parent would want for their children. You know you're not getting any younger. I'm worried, and your father is too. Mother, I, I understand where you're going to. But I do not want you to be worried. I'll get married soon. When are you introducing her to us? When I find her, I'll personally bring her to you. You mean you don't have anyone in mind yet? No. What? Since you do not have anyone in mind, I have someone who I know is good for you. Are you, are you, are you kidding? Do I look like I'm joking? <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't understand. I am still trying to, to figure out how to practice as a medical doctor in Nigeria. And yet father came up with the boom medical director of his hospital. I'm still trying to cope, still trying to understand. And here you are, seriously arranging a wife for me. Kingsley, I am not arranging a wife for you. I just told you that I know someone who is good for you. The most important thing there is for both of you to meet and see if you can work things out. <laughs> You're serious about this? Yes, I am. You're serious about this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, fine. If that will make you happy. 
So, when do we get to meet the girl in question? Very soon. I spoke with your father about it and then he likes the idea. Listen, son, if both of you meet and you feel it's not something you want to do, you can walk your separate ways. So, does the girl know about this? Her mother does. But I'm sure she must have informed her daughter. She is the daughter of my friend, Beatrice. All right, mother. I am not going to argue with you. I'll do as you say. Oh, oh I'm blushing. <laughs> Thank you, son. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Kingsley. Good morning, Sandra. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, sir. Yeah. Congratulations on your appointment as the medical director. Everyone in the hospital is indeed excited. That is something I am still trying to comprehend. Everyone is excited, but I am not. I'm still trying to cope with the medical practice here in Nigeria. And then my father came up with me being the medical director. That is huge. I am still surprised at my father, honestly. Do not hold it against your father. Your qualification speaks volume. I'm sure you will do well, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Sandra. You see, encouraging words like yours are all I need in times like this. Thank you. We are expecting you to move into your father's office. Mm -hmm. This place is not befitting for your new status. Uh. I mean... The medical director should be in the medical director's office. Um, well, I am comfortable here. Moreover, I still see my father as a medical director, so his office remains his office. Yes, so, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, please, can I get a cup of coffee? Right away, sir. All right, thank you very much. A lot of work. Everyone is excited. This is not happening. <laughs> okay. Hey, Mom. Hi, babes. You called. Uh huh. Oh, do you remember my friend, um, Antonia? Um. Oh, flashy Mrs. Kennedy. Who doesn't know her? <laughs> oh, you can say that again. Do you also know her son who just came back like six months ago? Well, I don't know him in person, but my friend who works as a nurse in their hospital just told me this evening that he is now the medical director of his father's hospital. <laughs> Why are we talking about him? Oh, uh, well, I was just wondering if, you know, both of you, if you could get married, you know. No, 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 just listen to this. An economist and a medical doctor. What a fantastic combo. No, no, just think about it. <laughs> Mom, are you trying to arrange a husband for me? Oh, well, something like that. Uh, he's a nice guy, all right? And he's every woman's dream. I mean, think about it. You will make a good pair. Uh, Mom, I, I don't know. I don't know how this whole thing looks. Um... I mean, I don't even know this guy. He is not a guy. He's a medical doctor. And all his patients that have been to see him all confirm that he is good. So what are we waiting for? I think you guys would make a good pair. We are not going to meet him. Because the last thing I will ever do is throw myself at any man. I am not Never. asking you to throw yourself at him. Anyway, he'll be visiting, so we get acquainted. Now, let, let me promise you something. If you both meet yourselves and you don't like each other, fine. We'll abort the whole process. But if you guys like each other, voila. 
<laughs> a wedding is on the way. <laughs> All right, mom. Mm. I'm not going to say anything for now until I meet this year, almighty Kinsley. <laughs> Problem. Come on, let me get something from the room. Okay. That's all right. Ah, I need to do fresh review. Color combination and ooh, I like this. Ah, oh, a long tail skirt. Mm -mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, girl. <laughs> Do. Auntie? Ah, go check who's at the door. Sound as if you're angry with someone. I just want to know what insult. Look, Mister, I did not ask for an introduction. I said, Who are you looking for? Young lady, I'm not quarreling with you. Well, I came to see Auntie Beatrice. Didn't you inform her before coming? Uh, well, too bad she's not in. I guess you can find your way out, can't you? What kind of, what kind of person is this? Oh. I'm very sorry about that, sir. You can give me the message. I'll deliver to Auntie Beatrice when she comes back. I, I don't understand. Why was she hostile towards me? Is that how she talks to everyone who comes in here? So who is she? Her name is Vivian, my cousin. She gets angry anytime that things didn't go the way she expects. But not to worry, she, she's a good girl. Though. Don't hold it against her. So, she's the Vivian? Yes, she's Vivian, Auntie Beatrice's daughter. And who are you? My name is Olido. I, I stay here with them. You stay here with them? Okay, um, I'll, I'll leave then. Have a nice day. Sir, please, you have not introduced yourself. I am Kingsley Kennedy. So when she comes back, tell her that Kingsley Kennedy was here. Okay, sir. Have a nice day, sir. Yeah, have a nice day. disappointed in you. I can't, I can't believe this. How many times have I warned you about this, your high-handedness? How many times? Now see what it has cost you. Mom, I don't understand. Can you please calm down and tell me what the problem is? You never seem to understand. Well, Mrs. Kennedy called me and told me that her son Kinsley was here to see you. And of course, in your usual manner, you were rude. You embarrassed the young man. A young man was here this afternoon. Could that person be Kinsley? Probably. Oh my goodness! How was I supposed to know he was the one? He was full of himself. Looking like one poorly paid civil servant. Oh really? Was that why you treated him the way you did? Because he was poorly dressed. He looked like a, a, a poorly paid civil servant. Do you sometimes listen to yourself when you talk? Mom, you can't blame me. I was waiting for a real man, not one poor looking thing. Shut up. Shut up! You know, sometimes I wonder if I actually give birth to you. It's obvious I have messed up. What can I do, Mom? Mom, you don't have to go. Let's finish what you started. Mom! I'm 
so sorry about what happened today. Honestly, I don't know her as that kind of a person. Probably she was not in her right frame of mind then. Mother, you don't have to apologize for anything. You don't know her more than she knows herself. She is not the kind of woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. Come on, son. You don't need to jump into that conclusion. Mother. Obviously, you're not saying what I am saying. Kingsley, what are you saying? Mother, Vivian is that kind of a person who doesn't care about others. Most especially her subject. She is rude. She doesn't care. She talks however she feels like. You need to see the way she spoke to me. Mom, she has so many attributes that I cannot cope with. You just met her today. And you know practically everything about her. How else do you want me to tell you about her? I met her today. She practically insulted me. She doesn't even know who I am. I walked into the house and she insulted me already just because I asked the whereabouts of her mother. Remember you told me it's not by force that if I try it doesn't work out, I back out. Now I am backing out and I want that stand to remain. Wow. You already have an irrevocable stand. So, what are you going to do now? You asked me to go find someone but I got there and saw the right one. Are you serious? Yes, I mean, you asked me to go look for one. But I got there and found the right one. Who? Her name is Olede. She stays with Auntie Beatrice. What? With all due respect, sir, I am a banker and not a desperate one. If it has gotten to the extent of you threatening me with closing your account because I have refused to attend your illicit appointment, then you can go ahead to close it. Stop calling me. Do not call me again. This conversation has been recorded. Any further move from you, I will use it against you. I know all you do. I saw her when I went there, but I'm wondering, why her? Do you know the implication? Well, I don't know of any, but whatever, whatever be the case, I am willing to stand by it. If you don't want Vivian, that's fine. But switching over to her cousin will pose a lot of problems for that innocent girl if Beatrice gets to know. Mother Auntie Beatrice cannot make a choice of wife for me. I have to follow my heart, mother. You don't have to worry about that. So, why do you want to get me involved then? Mother, I want you to sleep over it. I'm sure by tomorrow morning you will come up with a perfect plan for it. Please, exempt me from anything that will cost me my friendship with Beatrice. If you don't want Vivian, no problem. Figure out how you want to go about it without getting me involved. All right, mother. Whatever be the case, I'll keep you updated. Um, Olido, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, mother. Good. I am stepping out for a meeting, and I would like to eat vegetable soup when I come back. And please ensure you prepare just the way your mother used to make it. Okay. You look sick. What's the matter? Ma, I am not sick. What is it? Um, I, I, I don't have all the time in the world. Okay. Um, what? Just that the... Um, the what? The... the I don't the, have the, time. The jam, the jam registration has commenced, ma. I, I don't know my feet. Shut up. You don't know your feet. Of course you're not supposed to know your fate. You're here to work for me. That is your fate. It's not for you to tell me when to register you for job. When I'm ready, I'll do that. 
Just concentrate on your job. Jump on as certain as commenced. Look at you. Make sure the soup is as tasty as what your mother used to do. Fixing the mess that you made the other day. Oh, please, come on, Mom. You promised not to talk about it again. Is it that easy? Hmm? Uh -uh. Mom, why is all of the crying? Don't mind that stupid thing. She was trying to remind me that jam registration is on. <laughs> is that why she's crying? Must everyone go to school? Search me. Anyway, I'm leaving. Take care of the house. I'll be back shortly. Okay, okay mom. Take care of yourself too. Ah, the village still wants to go to school. How possible? <laughs> oh, please. Ah. Um, Anthony, my good friend, I, I decided to visit to. You know, talk about what happened at my place the other day. I mean, it was totally unacceptable. Um, I need you to apologize to your son on my daughter's behalf. Actually, Vivian would have come with me, but I figured that um, Kingsley wouldn't be around, so I need us to fix a meeting for them so they can sort out the issue themselves. Beatrice, your daughter disappointed me. I least expected what I saw. I was equally disappointed. I mean, it's unbecoming of a grown-up like her with her level of education. But that's, by the way, if I tell you that she really, really regrets it, you won't believe it. Please, let's try and see what we can do for them, please. Well, you have spoken well, my dear friend. I wanted to see you, but I was waiting for my husband to come back from his trip. There is a new development. A new development? My son is now interested in your niece, Oledo. How can that be? How do you mean? I never expected such from your son. Considering his social status. I mean, all Edo is smelly, ugly, and dirty. What would your son want to do with her? You know what? I think I have to leave. Well, continue with this discussion some other time. You know what, Professor Ackman? Go back to the Faculty of Social Sciences and make inquiries about me. I am a no-nonsense lady. For four years I was there, I made things happen. I am unstoppable. I am an authority. Want that man to stop saying trash about me. Want him. Else, I will crush him. Ah. Mom, what is the problem? You your, look restless. Your stupidity has cost you a lifetime opportunity. What happened? What is it? You are so stupid. Absolutely stupid. I mean, how could you? How many times have I warned you to watch how you behave and act at, at, at people you do not know? Because you never know who is who. How many times? Mother, what is the problem this time around? What? Well, the young man Kinsley that came looking for you is now looking at Oledo. How about that? What? Is he that classless? How could he do that? It's not about class. All right? It is not about class. Well, again, it's your mess. So you know what? 
You clean it up the best way you know how to. Stupid. this prescription exactly the way I've written it. Yes, doctor. Good. I'll keep you posted in case of an emergency. Very good. Good afternoon, doctor. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. A lady named Vivian is here to see you. So, um, are there no patients to attend to? Yes, there are people at the waiting room, but Dr. Ben can be attending to them while you urgently attend to the lady. Your father will always say do not keep a lady waiting. <laughs> so, um, it's alright. Let her in. Sir. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Oh, please do have a seat. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> ah, thank you. Now, thank you. What a pleasant surprise. <laughs> now, how may I help you? Um, it's lunch time. Do you have time to spare so you can actually go out and have some shots? That's a fabulous idea, but unfortunately, I have so much work on my desk. And above all, there are some patients out there who need doctors to attend to them. So. My partner, Ben, is attending to them, but I'm not sure the work would be enough for him, so I need to join them. So if you have something important to say, why not say it here? Mm -hmm. Well, it's fine if that is how you want it. Um, I actually came so we can talk. You know, ever since we met at my place, I've been looking for a way to meet you again. But I know you're always busy due to the nature of your job. That is why I decided to come to your office. Um, I want to apologize for what happened that day. I mean, I'm not always like that. Please, find a place in your heart to forgive me. Truly, I am sorry. Uh, Vivian, it's all right. I heard you. From you. From the depth of my heart, I forgive you. If it's from your mind, it's okay. It's a thing of the past, so let's forget about it. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, most importantly, I am sure you are aware of the initial arrangement by our parents for us to get married. Yes, I'm aware of that. What about it? I know it's meant to be on a ground of understanding to see if we could actually make it work. Exactly. It is not going to work. Why would you say that? We are just beginning to know each other. Um, Vivian, I'm a man that speaks his mind and I would like to tell you the truth so that I would not be misquoted. What are you saying? Um, look Vivian, I, I met you, I already have an interaction with you, so certainly you're not the one. I have someone else my heart yearns for. I, I, I'm sorry, you mean you prefer my cousin Oli to me? Is that what you're saying? How did you know this? It doesn't matter. Look, Kesley. I don't see any reason we can't make it work. I know we can. Hmm? Um, sorry, um, that's if we love each other. But even if you do, I don't. Listen, I have made my stance on this case. It's final. We cannot be. Well, I guess I have to take my leave now. Um, extend my greetings to your mother.
Now it's an emergency. I'm so confused right now. I don't know what to do. Look at me living like a slave in my own aunt's house. A woman that was supposed to play the role of a mother to me. She promised to take very good care of me and send me to the university. Why the sudden change of mind and attitude towards me? Have I done anything wrong? Is this how I'm going to continue? Heavenly Father, I need your guidance. Vivian, come back. What's wrong with you? I'm sorry, Mom. I wasn't thinking straight. That's why I didn't notice you. Why were you not at the office today? You went to see Kinsley. You did? So, what did you people talk about? I purposely went to see Kinsley during lunchtime to see if we can go out for lunch and resolve our differences. Mm -hmm. But he refused and insisted I should say whatever I want to discuss with him in his office. So, I expected you to take advantage of the situation. Take advantage of what, mother? He insulted me by telling me he had some patients to attend to. He values patients more than me. So, what happened after that? He was very rude. He made me to understand that it will never work between us. That his heart belongs to somebody else. And that person is all in. What? Hmm. Mom, how can I lose a man to, to all in? That thing. Hmm. No. He said all that to you? Yes, Mom. He was very serious. Mom, we have to do something. I have never been so embarrassed and disrespected. If he's not going to marry you, then he definitely cannot marry your leader. I will do something about it. But, first things first. Oledo! Oledo! Yes, Auntie. I am here, ma. What are you doing? I was in the kitchen. Do you know Kingsley? Is he the same Kingsley that came here? I did him no wrong. Why are you staring at us like a moron? Did you not hear her question? Do you know Kingsley? Yes, I I know one Kinsley that came here to look for you. Good. I don't ever want to hear that he visited and you opened the door for him when there's no one in the house. If he comes, attend to him behind the door and let him go back to wherever he's coming from. Yes, Do I make myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Why are you staring at her like a fool? Did you understand the instruction she just gave? I did. 
I'll go back to the kitchen. No, come back here. Listen. You see that Kensley? He is my man. Who came for me? Because he finally decided to make me his wife. If you know whatever witchcraft you laid across his path, that has made him to suddenly develop cold feet. Hmm. Undo it. Undo it. Hmm. Because I am going to crush you like a trailer. Fool. Get out of my sight. Men, they always like the dirty ones. You wouldn't wish it away. Has no respect for nobody. What you sow, you shall reap. Uh, the truth of the matter is, I am not ready to marry. But my mother convinced me, she gave me one or two reasons. And then the most important part is that she has someone already in mind. Just when I made out time to go see this person, I found another person. And guess what? That is the right person. Yes, that's the one I'm going to make my wife. <laughs> of course, of course, I know how women behave and all that, but this seems to me more like war. And I'm ready to withstand whatever comes out of it. Of course, you know, lately I have not given women attention because of work and reasons best known to me. Especially, I wouldn't want to end up with the one that would frustrate my life. <laughs> of, of course. I'll keep you posted as soon as everything is set. Alright? If you are going to succeed as a nurse in this hospital, then you must learn to mind your business. I don't know what you mean by that. Have I said anything wrong? Dr. Kingsley is not just one of the doctors in this hospital. He is the son of the founder and currently the medical director. You have no right whatsoever to discuss his personal life. I only made an observation. He's not looking okay lately. Madam Observer. And still, he was able to manage that lady who was on the verge of death. It is possible you are planning to throw yourself at him. I pity you because he will just fire you. Where is that coming from? I never told you I'm planning to do that. You don't need to tell me anything before I know what's running through your head. Belinda, stop looking at the MD inappropriately before you find yourself in the labor market. This is one thing I hate about you. You always read meaning into everything. I've said my piece. It's coming. What a pleasant surprise. <laughs> this is it. Thank you. <sighs> you didn't even call or send a text to tell me you weren't coming. Huh? That's all like you. Am I missing something? <laughs> I actually tried to reach you, but your line wasn't connecting. Oh. And unfortunately, I'm not the text message type. Forgive me. I actually switched off my phone. I mean, I was having a lot of disturbing calls, text messages. I had no choice than to switch off. Sorry about that. It's okay. Kingsley told me that Vivian was at his office. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am aware of that. Okay. Betty, please. I want you to help me plead with your daughter not to feel disrespected or embarrassed. You know, the initial plan was to see if they would fall in love and make things work. But unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Let us just allow the young man follow his heart. After all, all you do is tell your daughter. Uh, your son is cheering my family. I mean, why would he want to marry Oled when Vivian has been the one on the line? I don't see anything wrong with that. Everything is wrong with it. Oledo is not my daughter. And she can never fit into that picture. Betty, I want us 
to remember that they were never engaged and they had no kind of relationship before now. So what do you want me to say? If your son is not ready to marry Vivian, he should stay clear of all they do. Betty, I really do not like the way you're taking this whole thing. Well, I will leave now and give you some time to think about it. I think it's actually your son you should be talking to. He should be the one doing the thinking. Son, I am still surprised that you are operating in this small office instead of my office. Father, why the rush? Moreover, I'm still comfortable with this office and I still see you as the medical director. Okay, so they come out of that. I have really wished that position for you. You should be operating from the office of the MD. All right, Father, I am sure this is not what brought you here. Can we just proceed to the reason you're here? Well, um, son, there is this issue uh, you want us to talk about without involving your mother in the house. But of course, you know, there's no way I would talk with you without your mother pumping in. So I decided to come to the office. I hope it has got nothing to do with Auntie Beatrice and her daughter. Son, you know the original plan was for you and Vivian to get on well and of course end as husband and wife. But the way you're going about it uh, seems uh, what we... And as it turned out, the lady you hold in high esteem is bereft of manners. I am sure you wouldn't want your son to settle with such a woman. Would you? Uh, I have pondered on this long enough. But I don't think Madame Beatrice will be home with you getting married with her niece instead of her daughter. All right, Father, let us judge this critically. Why would she have a problem with my choice? I mean, I am the one who is going to live this woman. Don't you think I should be given the right to make a choice of the woman I am going to live with? Okay. This Ole, do you speak of? Uh, is she uh, really aware of this decision? Um, well, she doesn't know, but I think I'll be visiting Auntie Beatrice's house on Sunday and then I'll get to meet her so we talk about it. <sighs> you know, that lady and your mom have been friends for as much as I can remember. So I wouldn't want this your decision to deter their friendship. Father, in all honesty, if choosing my wife, a woman I am going to spend the rest of my life with, a woman that possesses everything I want in a woman could tear them apart. It simply means they were never friends in the first place. How about that? Who would have told my mother that Auntie Beatrice would change against me like this? Everyone has gone to sleep. And this is the time I am allowed to eat. Jehovah, the mighty man in battle. I know you are up there looking at me. Please make a way for me. Even where there is no way. My one and only beautiful sister, Fortunate, what are you doing here? Jocelyn, I am hoping you're not going to start from where they stopped. I don't understand. I'm even regretting why I came back home. I've not even finished dropping my bag when mom and dad started shouting at me. They were just shouting! Hey, 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 hey. 
You're in my office, okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You've not said anything. Why was mom shouting at you? The auntie had me that I left school without calling. And that's the moment I decided to take my bag, I would have put a call through to tell them that I was going to come to their house. Or better still, inform them that I'm on my way home so that they will be rest assured that I'm safe. Key, even when I was trying to explain to them that I wanted to give them a surprise, they paid no attention. Do you want to know the truth? You are wrong. They are right. What, King? You heard me right. You see, with the level of insecurity we have in this country, your family should always know your whereabouts. So that if anything happens, we know exactly where to start tracking you. King, you know what? You all are joy killers. Oh, I beg your pardon. Look, see, see, see. See what I brought home to come and show you people, but you people not even pay attention to see. Just see my progress so far. See it. Mom and dad will not even listen to me. They'll just be shouting, yelling, and. God, I'm just worried right now. <laughs> King, why are you laughing? Why should I not laugh? It's a thing to celebrate. My younger sister is on the front page of an international magazine, and you expect me not to laugh. This is. This is good. This is. This is big. Wow, so. How did you pull this stunt? King, it is not a stunt. Look, my modeling career is beginning to take an international shape. I'm on a cover page on Merit King. Can't you see it? All right, that's enough. I, I'll talk to Mama. I'll see how she can understand with you. Thank you, This is massive. My kid sister on the front page of an international magazine. You can say that again, King. That's uh, just what I wanted them to see. This is really nice. I'm impressed. Thank you, King. Thank you so much. Thank you for supporting me. Love you. Is this really you? Uh -uh, I doubt it. <laughs> hmm. yeah, it's been so long, bro. Yes, so. Mm. Thank you. If you need anything else, you let me know. Come back and take this tray. Mm. Mm. This is so long. How have you been? <laughs> Fine, dear. It's not been easy. And managing too. You know this banking thing and your stress. Back. No problem, I can understand. <laughs> Is that girl your cousin you told me about? Yes, she's the one. <sighs> Why is she looking like that? You know, for once, I almost thought your mom got another maid. <sighs> How is that your problem? I beg, just me. What's up with the guy you told me your mother wanted to pick you up with? Hey! My dear. My dear. Long story. See, see trouble. I was at home one day when a guy who looked every inch a poorly paid civil servant came looking for my mom. You know me now. I talked to him rudely because of the kind of confidence he was showing. I didn't really know he was the one my mom was talking about. Are you serious? Hmm. Very serious. It was later on to find out he was the one. Vivian, this is not sounding good though. I have always told you to be cautious with the way you talk to people or treat people. You never can tell who is behind the picture. Hmm. So what happened? To tell you the truth, I really regret my action that day. I don't know what that witch did to him. He said he doesn't want me anymore but her. Who? Hmm? The girl that just served us. Yes, my cousin Oledo. Hey, Vivian, this is serious, so. It is. So you did not apologize? Despite all my apologies, he still insisted that he wants Oledo, not me. And what did your mom say about this? Yeah, you know my mom, she would never allow that to happen. Ha! Well, maybe you guys are not destined to be. Oh, if you ask me, I would say you should forget about this guy and his choice and move on with your life before the whole thing would look like you're forcing yourself on him. Who is this guy anyways? His name is Kinsley. 